And I've slackened the string off by unthreading it through my toggle. So it's sitting there just taut so I can check that string line is sitting centrally at the grip. And it just shows where it needs to be at this tip. So that centre line wants to be about here. Which is quite nice because it means I've got to be narrowing the tip from this edge which will remove some of that knot. But um, it shows why I don't narrow the tips too early. You can see I'm substantially off centre there. But that's not a problem. Similarly at this tip I want to be just a, a whisker over to this side. And again that will help me to narrow the tip. See there's a pencil mark where I want to take bait off. But if I narrow the tip towards there, you know, from either side, that will help remove some of the weight. And then take some more off the belly as well. It's getting very close now. I've had it to um, 45 pound at 24 inches. I've started cleaning up tool marks, checking the thickness, just, you know, looking for, for thick spots. As I run my fingers, all the verniers over there. Just started shaping in the grip a little bit more, so and that will be the arrow pass. My thumb will sort of sit under there, but what I'll do is I'll sort of nestle my hand onto it, and and anywhere I can feel it sort of touching the hand, like there, I'll just rasp it away until you find it just fits comfortably in your hand with no no sort of pressure points. Yeah, a lot of people talk about hand shock in bows and they say, oh, the tips are too heavy, you're using too light an arrow, all sorts of stuff. The only bows I've ever felt with hand shock were where the grip was, you know, a bad shape. Or the bow had a lot of um, sort of twist in it. So it was very wide and there was one hazel one, hazel war bow, very wide trapezoid section. And effectively the back was widest, or the belly was widest just there. And of course it, it dug into your, to your knuckle just there, something something nasty. Bow like this though, a primitive, you can shape the grip a bit. I had some chap once at a shoot telling me, oh, you're a primitive bow, you can't have the grip all shaped and, and a cutaway arrow pass and this, that and the other. Well, you can have a cutaway arrow pass, you can't have a shelf. But is he telling me that Stone Age man, sitting there of an evening by the fire, didn't, didn't fiddle around just trying to make his bow a bit more comfortable? If we look down the bow, it's taken very little set, if any. Uh, that bottom limb's still got that little hint of reflex. And the upper's got a hint of deflex. I can't honestly remember if that was there originally. But there again, it's not been quite back to full draw yet. So to say it's not taken any set is a bit like saying it hasn't exploded yet. Certainly starting to look handsome. Might take a little more just there. Looks a little bit just not quite elegant. Makes this limb look look like it's pointing that away. Yeah, a little bit of cosmetic stuff here and there. The tips have been narrowed quite a bit and I've got the horn knocks on. I haven't buffed it up. I've been checking the thickness, looking for thick spots, taking out tool marks. So it's had a good scraping all the way along. Tidying up the back, you know, getting off the odd high point, making it more like a single growth ring. Uh, before that, I'd had it to 24 at 45 pounds. So I expect I may well have gained another couple of inches. Oh, I think left's looking slightly weak, is it? Nice shape. Uh, 25. 
that's 25 at 45. Could be deceptive. I think the left's looking a little weak. But I've taken quite a lot of thickness off there. I think I'll exercise that a bit. I don't want to jump in because that distance looks greater than that. So that tiller, that's that bit of, I never know whether it's positive or negative tiller, whatever. Forty-five. Forty-five at twenty-five. She's pretty highly stressed. Forty-five at twenty-five. Hmm. Looking at it closely and remembering again that that lower limb has a bit of reflex, you'd expect the lower limb to look quite a bit stiffer. So I'm going over the right limb, just tidying up areas that are potential stress concentrations cleaning out tool marks, rounding the edges, uh, areas like this where we've got there was a filled knot that's virtually all gone now and you can see the wood's quite a bit thicker there and also there's these little islands you know little rings showing so they, I could probably take them down until they disappear or almost disappear just to ease it off a tad maybe it's a bit thick here now we're talking about very small amounts now and feeling it feels thin there and getting fatter well it should do as i go up the limb a few tool marks here don't know if they show up to get the light right bit of a sharp edge just round it off mostly with a scraper just these little bits of fiddling and fettling all makes that tiny bit of difference just tease back that last inch or two of draw length it's not a race but it's sort of the final opportunity to put right anything that you think might be an error now it's tempting to say she's just too fat there there's too much allowance around this knot and that may well be the case but I'm reluctant to turn that into a weak point. Oh, I've somehow got a score across there. That will come out with the scraper. So it's quite thin there, it just bulges up around the knot. Could maybe take a tiny, tiny touch there, but I think it's mostly the tip that needs the work. It'll just be subtle little bits and bobs and we'll try it on the tiller again. I'm trying this with slightly different lighting, trying to get a bit more contrast. Uh, I'll give it some exercise. I've not done a lot, but we just want to... I don't want to ruin it now, so let's take it slowly. We got to 25 last time, so that's three inches to go. That's only one more inch of tip movement, but we want the correct tip moving correctly. I'll try and get my eye in to really see where she's flexing or not as the case may be. I actually think it's a little stiff at that, that knot to be honest but I'm understandably loath to reduce it. It is isn't it? It's stiff there, from about there to there it's stiff. Uh, I shall tease it just a little. And yet yeah, that distance is looking bigger than that now, which is good. And when I took the string off, that tip did recover, so I haven't over weakened that left tip. Uh, I could probably just pull it back to 28 and it would be that whisker over 45. Why do I want 45? Not a magic number, it's just a nice weight. Yeah, you see that left limb, still got that little hint of reflex, not a lot, some of it's come out, and the right limb's taken a whisker of set. Where's it taken the set? So here? Difficult, I'm not going to do a lot. In fact, I'm going to do very little, but feeling it, that side feels quite good. This side, you've got quite a lot of bulk 
you've got the extra width on the sapwood and it feels just a little bit thick just if I had to say I'll just file that off like the last bit I'll file well I made the last bit bastard file or cabinet rasp just that whisker maybe a whisk yeah I can feel it's thin there swells up a bit there very very subtle now though softly softly catchy monkey and all that stuff right I've just taken off that pencil mark there and there a little bit down the middle of just flattening this belly tiny bit on this corner back and belly just just trying to persuade this to flex a tiny bit more because I if I get a sixteenth of an inch movement there by the time you get to here that's three sixteenths the leverage of the, of the string is three to one three threes are nine that's nine sixteenths that's half an inch of extra draw just for a sixteenth inch movement there so beginners get they get impatient they get they get two thirds of the way through a bow halfway through a bow or whatever and nothing seems to happen so they start digging in more there comes a point where you need to slow down and I'm way beyond that point I'm so close now and I'm being ultra fussy ultra picky because it's a highly stressed bow because I want it to be I want it to be the best bow I've ever made or this one to be a masterpiece I had one a while ago that was a masterpiece it was stunning lovely corrugations all the way up the limbs beautiful honey and cream sapwood shot beautifully until it exploded I'd actually sold it to someone he'd shot it here it was fine he drove it back up to the Midlands shot a dozen arrows through, his, through it and it went bang I just PayPal'd him his money back shrugged and moved on you don't get something for nothing and yeah I've been wanting to do one like this for a long time so if it goes bang I'll be terribly sad but if it doesn't I'll be a smug Uncle Derek that shouldn't go bang I reckon I could probably pull this straight back to 28 maybe even 29 but I ain't going to try it so I'm getting a bit tiller blind now <laughs> And there's 26. Now that was interesting. I'm going to review that because I, th I think this needs to move more out here. But 26. That'll do for now. I'm, I'm getting antsy about the whole thing. It's easy, you, you can end up, like I said, getting tiller blind. You're a little bit here, a bit there. But no, back away, have a cup of tea. Decide what is it really right? Am I, am I going to spoil it? Do I just. You know, clean it up, varnish it and shoot the damn thing. I reviewed that last bit of video. Uh, took a still at full draw on the screen of the computer and put a circular coaster up in front of the screen and moved it from one limb to the other. And the two limbs, absolutely identical arc of a circle, as near as I could tell. But that's not right. The lower limb with that hint of reflex, the upper limb with a hint of deflex and again allowing for a positive tiller or whatever the term is, the right limb should be bending slightly more, the left should be a bit stiffer. So I'll just repeat what I did last time, there's a few little touchy, light touches with a rasp and a file. I'll taper this tip of this upper limb a bit as well, a bit of width taper. Just improve the look of it, tidy it up, go over it, take out the tool marks from that work I did last time. Yeah, you can see those rasp marks. We'll take those out. Tiny bit of work here. Just ease that upper limb off, just a whisker, because we've got about two inches of draw to go. I don't mind it if it's a little bit overweight. Right, I've eased off this limb a little bit more sort of where there were thick points just hope 
hoping to just get it easing back that last couple of inches. Just give it some exercise. It does look better actually. It's hard to know sometimes if I can really see something or I just think I can. Wow, it's working hard. Whoop, that was 28 inches. I should breathe a big sigh of relief and relax now. Uh, I've marked that at the right point of the arrow pass, so I was supporting the bow sort of where it sit in the crook of your index finger and thumb. But I mean some people will support the bow down the bottom, they'll heal it. Other people have it sitting in the whole hand, but it's always a compromise, but I tend to support it about there and pull it from in line with the arrow pass. Yeah. Not quite a full brace, but um, certainly close enough to polish up the horn knocks, clean out any few remaining tool marks, make a decent string and get it shot in. But I think I want to put, probably put a hundred arrows through it before I consider it done. Now ah, you see I actually pulled it over 50 pounds there. So a bit of cleaning up. I can drop a few pounds Yeah, but as it shoots in it will settle slightly. I'm in no mad rush because I want this I want this to be a good one. And relax. <laughs> 